Thank you. So I'd like to see a, a show of hands. Who here is a fight person and who here is a flight person? You know what I'm talking about, right? That, that thing that happens when you're suddenly threatened by something that, that you either run into the fray or you run the other way, right? I mean, it, it happens, it's a physiological thing. You have no control over it, it just happens. Hormones are released and, and your eyes dilate and your heart rate goes up and you either do one thing or the other. Well, I think there is a third category too and it's called freeze. And I think I fall squarely in the middle of freeze. Years ago, I was driving down a very uh, dangerous winter road, lots of snow and it was dark and it was scary. And I'm going down a two lane highway and suddenly the back end of my tail, my car starts spinning out in the classic fishtail across the two lanes of traffic. Before I know it, I'm on the side of the road on the shoulder facing up the road that I've just been coming down and a tractor trailer comes down right behind me. I don't know what the driver was thinking, but the whole time I was in this moment, I was clutching the wheel of my car. I wasn't turning into the skid. I wasn't doing any of the things I learned. I just clutched that wheel for dear life. I froze, right? Another time friends took us uh, water skiing and I, and, and I hadn't done it much. I thought, let me give it a try, sure. So they're very patient with me. And after many, many attempts, I was able to get my ass up out of the water and I was actually on skis on the water. And it was all going great. I was quite confident until a ski started to go out from under me. And well, you can picture what happened next, but what do they tell you when you water ski and you start to fall? You're supposed to let go of the tow rope, right? So not me though, no, I cling on to that thing for dear life. Despite what I knew, despite what I knew the ramifications would be if I held on to that rope, it took a tremendous spill and let's just say it was like, well, we don't need to discuss me getting pulled through the water by a large boat. Anyway, but I have to give myself some credit because I don't just freeze. Sometimes I do go towards things. I'll call it that mom gene. You know, when someone, you hear someone crying or someone yelling or, or something breaking and something in you goes, someone needs my help. Someone's in trouble. I've got to go to it. And I've done that actually multiple times. It's when someone else is in trouble, I tend to run to make sure they're okay. I mean, when I watch football on TV or a soccer game, I don't watch the quarterback or the receiver. I watch the players around the play. I'm looking for peripheral damage. I want to know, does someone need the trainer? So I've also witnessed and run towards several domestic disputes in my lifetime. I can think of three right off the top of my head. Once was here in my office where I am right now, the third floor of my house with the window open and I heard a block away, a woman yelling and screaming at a car, zigzagging on the road, the door half open, her half in the car. And I ran out of my house, I ran the block to it, and I went to her to see if I could be of help. But I always stand back. I always keep my distance because there's something about preserving yourself, isn't there? But I wanted her to know, I'm here. I have a phone. I'm a witness to this. I'm seeing this happen. I'm here for you if you need my help. But I also want that other person to know who is harming her that I'm here watching you. I will call the police. I have called the police. I will do those things. But I want them to know that I'm here. But as we're all starting to learn now, it doesn't really seem to matter. But the people doing some of the harming can really give a shit who's watching, who's recording, who you're calling. There is um, an exhibit right now at the North Museum, right down the street from where I live. If you have a chance, you should go check it out. It's called facinghistory.org. And it's about uh, stories of oppression, uh, racism, the Holocaust. And there's one story on there about a black man who was in the subway late at night, no one around, but he did see a young white woman, a mother, and she was holding a baby and had two young children by her side in a suitcase. And she was obviously struggling. And he started to take a step towards her to help her. But then he caught himself and he said, how many ways could this go really wrong for me? And he didn't help her. But he talked about for years afterwards how guilty he felt for not just helping another human being. You know, so what, what do you do? I, I'm not a fighter. I don't like confrontation at all. I mean, in my dreams, I like punch people with my sissy punches and I call them names and I swear at them, but in my real life, that's just not who I am. And obviously running away is not a thing and freezing is useless. So I've been trying to figure out what can Melissa do? What can I do now? And one of the things I talk about on that display at the North Museum is engaging. I'm like, I can do that. I can engage. And how we engage or how I engage, it's by telling stories. It's by listening to other people's stories. I mean, really listening. 
then probably most importantly, learning from their stories. So I haven't got this quite figured out yet, but I'm working on it. <laughs>